Hi everyone. This is the electrical wiring panel. It's a panel in the rear left hand side of the van. As you can see, it uh, goes over the wheel arches here. Um, our mains, RCDs and MCBs for basically cutting off the 230 electricity. This is our battery to battery charger. This is our two kilowatt inverter. This is gonna be our changeover switch from mains to the inverter. This is our 12 volt DC fuse board. And this is our cable entry where all our cables are gonna come out. So this panel is actually five feet long, so it's kind of hard to see it. But uh, stay tuned and watch, see how we wire it all up. Okay, so as I'm mounting everything, I'm using these little guys, little grommets. Um, so that's basically keeping the metal parts up off the ground. You'll see them here as well. Let me see if we can see this guy here. Yeah. So it gives a, a little bit of vibration stability or shock absorption, I suppose you want to call it, as we're driving along. So it means everything's not getting shaken about. Okay, so what I've got here, uh, there are two blank mounting holes. I'm just drilling a little pilot hole in them. So when I mount it over here, I can position the little grommets to give me my little shock absorber. I find that putting the shock absorbers on stuff makes a big difference because as the van is bouncing along, um, the white panel will be attached to the um, the body of the vehicle and any vibrations that would come through, if these were mounted directly onto that panel, the vibrations would come straight through. But with the little grommets or the O-rings, we get an extra little bit level an extra little bit of shock absorption. So I'll just drill a couple of holes here. All right, so there we have the four holes drilled through. And we can put this here, and then we can use the screws to locate where we need to put the grommets. Okay, so I'm going to grab some grommets that will fit nicely under this guy. Um, oh, those, no, they're too small. So that's a problem too there. So they're too small. So if I take a bigger one that actually goes around, no. Um, let's get a bigger one that'll go around there so it'll give us plenty of so plenty of shock absorption. So these guys are a little bit big, but um, they will give me plenty of shock absorption. So I'm just going to go and mount these now. So there they are all mounted on the panel. Uh, we'll bring it out and stick it in shortly and see how it lines up. And then we'll get to wiring it, labeling it and getting everything sorted out. Okay, so it's quite windy out, but that's basically the electrical panel installed in the van. You can see the wires coming through the cable entry. There's going to be another cable entry here. It's all just mocked up for the minute. And that's underneath the bed, so everything's going to be sit there. It's going to be nice and accessible. Um, and yeah, it's quite neat, and everything's labelled. So we can see what's what at a simple glance. Part of wiring the panel in is connecting our external hookup socket. So what I'm going to do with that is basically put a gland in here and wire the plug. So this is basically our power connection. So that's the input into the van. Our trailing extension lead will be made up of this. So the power will be live here, but because it's a socket, it's a trailing socket rather than a plug. It means that even though the, this is live when it's connected, we can't actually access our fingers on it. Whereas with this in the van, that's our connection on the outside. And this guy just pops in there like that. And we're connected to shore power or external mains power, whatever we want to call it. 
So for all the wiring in the van, I'm using blue Arctic Flex. It's an outdoor rated cable, specifically designed for uh, external power connections. It's a rubberized cable. Um, it's not actually a full rubber cable, but it's a very, very flexible plastic. And it's designed to be used specifically for outdoors. So, it's 2.5 square, and I'm going to get it connected into this socket right now. So that's basically our mains outside connection wired. We'll go and fit it in the van now and see how we get on. Just pop the cover on. Two screws, job done. Okay, so here we are at the mains hookup socket. We open it up, there's nothing there. So we need to feed this cable through. It's very windy, so apologies. And he just pops in there. I'm gonna shove it because I need both my hands. Okay, so that's it, shoved in position, and we wanna use the connect the power. That just flicks out like that, and we connect our power in that way. So I'll push it back in, locks in, close down our hatch, come out of the wind. There's the cable coming through, and we just need to put another glass. So into our changeover switch here. To have everything as neat as possible, I'm gonna drill a hole here and bring the cable in through the back of it and connect it in. Build some holes to get some cable coming in from the external power source. We're also gonna run the power in from the inverter. So I'm gonna connect the mains, external hookup, and the power from the inverter to the changeover switch, but there's not gonna be anything wired yet. So we need to wire from the changeover switch down to the fuse board or the fuse box for the 230 foot side. Okay, so I've used a seven mil drill bit to drill a hole. It's never big enough, so I tend to use the cone step drill, which allows me to choose the size of hole I want. So we can make this bigger or smaller, so let's make a hole that the cable will fit through nicely. So the cable's coming through. I'm gonna wire that into the changeover switch so that we know that our mains power is part of that one. I've left quite a bit of cable at the back. I don't know if you can see it or not. Yeah, I've left quite a bit of cable at the back which allows me to pull this panel off in the future if we never ever need to do any more external wiring. The plug that we're gonna to wire to the inverter is gonna be, uh, now this is a perma plug or there's another one called Jura plug. These are very, very highly rated plugs. They are not cheap, they're about five euros, five pounds, five dollars, but um, they're a much, much more robust. They'll resist any form of impact and they're HG, HGPT, uh, which is a polyethylene, I think, or something. Really not like your standard uh, crappy white plug, that, uh, which is there. There's just a standard crappy white plug, and they tend to break if they get damaged. These are a, an impact resistant material, uh, and I would recommend using one of these for the connection for from your inverter into your changeover switch, or even into your mm. consumer unit if that's the way you're going, because it's a much better plug. I can't believe I'm actually talking about plugs, but yeah. Uh, and don't forget, always take this piece of paper off. What we've got is our cable conduit here. Drill the hole in that, drill the hole in that. That's gonna sit there and allow the cable that comes from the inverter up some more conduit in there and into the inverter. So I'm just gonna mount that now in the right position. I've mounted those guys there with the screw and I've used these caps for the screws. So that will fit tight there. That one will close over on top of you. So yeah, so there we have them now. And there's no nasty sharp screw heads uh, for the cables to hit off. All we'll basically do 
and then pop the cover on over that. So there's a the plug into our conduit and up and in for our changeover switch. Just pop you off and show you what we're doing. So there's the cable and it's going in to be connected into our changeover switch. So there we are. That's it all in out of the way, nice and neat. Gonna connect it to the changeover switch and that'll be part one complete. There we have our power. Live and neutral is coming in from the external and then G and GN, which is generator, but in our case, it's the inverter is coming in. Plug is wired, coming up through conduit and in through the top and everything's wired to earth. And that raises an interesting question. How could the van be earthed if we're on rubber wheels? Basically, a fault to earth will be detected, which would be basically a short circuit. Anything that we have plugged in, for example, the fridge, the TV, laptop chargers, will cause the consumer unit, which is over there, to trip out. Okay, so I've stripped these cables. I've stripped them very long. The reason I'm stripping them long is I want to fold them over because these connections on the consumer unit is for thick panel wire or solid cable. So I'm just gonna fold these over to make sure that when we tighten down these guys, we get a good fit. And now that we've got the connection made, you can see that the insulation goes right up to the terminal and there's no exposed copper and that's the correct way of doing it. So if you can see copper, you've got anything exposed, Redo it and make sure that when the connection is in that you've got a nice solid connection on the terminals and you can see no copper on the outside. Now the way I'm wiring this is I'm wiring this for sockets only because we're not running any lighting off the mains. And the reason it's being done this way is because all our lighting is going to be 12 volts which means that we have minimum draw on power and we're not running through the inverter to try and make the, or try and run lights. Well there we've got our mains cable going from the consumer unit all the way back down to the changeover switch and then we have our input from our outside hookup and there we have our connection down below coming up to the conduit from the inverter so we've got our two hookups one from the mains hookup on the outside and the other from the inverter so there's our mains hookup, there's our inverter, and we have everything earthed because when we're connected to the main supply uh, on the hookup, that's important. When we're connected to the inverter, it's not because we, technically speaking, have no earth. We're just using our neutral. And neutral and earth are bonded outside in the real world. Anyway, I'm not going to go into it. It's not relevant to most camper van installations. So, I'm just going to put the cover on this, and then I'm going to go over to the consumer unit and finish off getting it wired there we have our consumer panel wired and ready to bring in wires from our sockets to it our changeover switch is wired so that basically completes part one of the electrics video thank you very much for watching part one if you like it give us a thumbs up uh, if you're not already subscribed maybe consider subscribing and uh, hit the notification bell to get uh, notified when we put up new videos and in part two, we're going to look at some more wiring of the DC side or the 12 volt side. So that basically what we've done is completed the AC side apart from wiring in the sockets, which won't happen until the panels go in in completion. And hopefully this video has been uh, somewhat informative. And don't forget, don't know what you're doing or you're unsure of, seek help, seek guidance or get somebody competent or qualified to do this part of the install. Any questions, stick them in the comment section below and I'll try and get as many answers back to you as quickly as possible. And again, thanks for watching.